Living deep within the jungles off the coast of Indonesia are the Mentawai, who are the most commonly referenced people to practice a rite of passage for young girls known as tooth chiseling. For the women of Mentawai, sharpened teeth represent beauty, in which the sharper and more narrow the teeth are, the more desired a woman is. For young girls growing into womanhood, this is an important practice to indicate their transition from childhood. At the first sign of ovulation, often around the age of 13, girls will partake in this practice. The village will hold a feast and a ceremony in the days leading up to the big event. When the time comes, the members of the tribe call on the spiritual inclined medicine man to prepare his sharpening tools. Unfortunately for these young girls though, the deep jungles of Indonesia don't offer much in regards to painkillers. With nothing to numb their pain, these girls enter the medicine hut and have their teeth grinded away with chisels, rocks, and hammers to form sharpened edges. Going through with this ritual is believed to please the spirits, but it can often lead to painful oral complications for the initiates. The practice of sharpening teeth is one that can be traced back to as far as the ancient Mayans. While the true reasoning behind these ancient examples is not completely understood today, it is believed that the elderly women of their tribes would file down young women's teeth using different stones and water to achieve desired shapes. For the same reason as the mental Y today, the sharpening of teeth was seen as beautiful and elegant. While tooth sharpening was a ritual that was expected by all girls in the past, it has evolved into being a personal decision for these women. However, those who continue to practice this traditional coming of age are extremely praised and celebrated within the community. Thus, young girls transitioning into womanhood experience extremely tough social pressures to partake in this tradition as the desire for beauty is strong. Here in the West African country of Cameroon, young girls transitioning into womanhood go through a common and extremely painful procedure known as breast ironing. This horrific practice is used on young girls at the early stages of puberty and is meant to stop the growing of maturing breasts. It is done to keep the girls from being sexualized and potentially being raped or harassed. Most commonly, this procedure entails large stones and even steel being heated over fire to extremely high temperatures and then being placed on the young girl's chest. It is an attempt to melt and burn away the tissues and fat within the breast resulting in a flatter chest. Horrifically, the young girl's own mother is most commonly the person holding them down and burning them. Other techniques involve using wood wooden clubs and even hammers to beat the breast down. A less common technique often utilized by the higher class is a procedure that entails using elastic bands tightly wrapped around the girls to keep their breasts flat. Whether it is beating, burning, or using the elastic bands though, this is never a one-time procedure. This tradition is extremely ineffective as when the girls begin to heal, the breasts will continuously grow back, resulting in these girls going through this pain repeatedly. This often causes severe psychological and physical damage over time. Aside from the exorbitant amount of pain that this causes, girls will often suffer from cysts, infection, and severe tissue damage. It is estimated today that nearly 4 million girls have been subjected to this ritual. A ritual that essentially is nothing more than barbaric torture inflicted on the girls. In early 2016, reports came out of Britain that mothers had been using these techniques on their children using spatulas and even hammers within Britain, showing that this ritual is is far from going away. In the southern African country of Malawi, girls go through a coming of age ritual that is absolutely shocking. Often, at the extremely young age of just 8 to 10 years old, girls are sent to initiation camps. Upon arriving, the girls are met and accompanied throughout the week by elderly women who will teach them their duties as women. This entails learning to cook and clean, but the two week camp is almost entirely revolved around learning how to please men sexually. Girls are told to lie on top of each other to get a better understanding of intercourse and different positions. However, most controversially, the girls are encouraged to practice their teachings and before camps end must endure sexual cleansing. In other words, they must partake in having sexual intercourse with a man who will be a complete stranger and are forbidden to use protection. This horrific practice has been passed down for generations as girls are sent to these camps by their own families to ensure that their daughters will be accepted into society. While tradition, many families send their daughters at these extremely young ages. 
ages in hopes that they will become pregnant. As this area is full of poverty, families with daughters will sell their daughters off shortly after becoming pregnant, deferring the cost of her and her baby to the man. Families have also been known to hire male sex workers like Eric and Neva, known as hyenas, to come into these girls' bedroom at night to cleanse their daughters. This tradition results in many extremely young girls having forced unprotected sex with men to prepare for womanhood. If a girl doesn't go through with this, she is considered ineligible for marriage, and it is believed by those who practice that deathly diseases will be cast upon their families and even their entire village. This causes extreme pressure by families to go through with this ritual. Within the Maasai tribe of Kenya, along with numerous groups within Africa and other regions of the world, this is one of the most horrific rituals practiced, female circumcision, a common ritual for young women to mark their transition into womanhood. Before a girl can be married, she must first undergo this procedure as she is seen as a child until she does. This is commonly done in a ceremony where the entire community will come together and celebrate the young girl's coming of age and her passage into adulthood. The girls under no anesthesia are mutilated as most of their genital areas are removed with knives and razor blades causing unimaginable pain. The extreme poverty in the region causes many families to sell off their daughters at very young ages, meaning that the girls are often extremely young when they experience this horrific tradition. The knowledge of these practices being spread around the globe in the last 10 to 20 years has brought outrage, leading many organizations and people to call for the practice to be banned. While this has worked in many areas, the practice has not stopped. The ceremonies are simply much more private than they had previously been. It has also had an extremely negative effect of families mutilating their daughters at even younger ages to avoid suspicion. Undergoing such a surgery in often terrible conditions has led to girls often experiencing excessive bleeding, infection, and spreading diseases like AIDS. However, it is strongly believed by those who practice that this elevates girls into womanhood and is necessary to be considered a complete woman. Being that many nerve endings are removed, the Maasai believe that their daughters will be far less likely to engage in premarital sex. While horrific, this tradition continues in various parts of the world and is unlikely to stop in the near future as these traditions are deeply ingrained into culture. Within the Apache Navajo tribe, girls are traditionally required to complete a coming-of-age cultural ceremony, the Sunrise Ceremony. Following the summer after their first menstruation, girls partake in this four-day ritual. These four days of this ceremony represent the Apache creation story as the young girls go through the four stages of life, infancy, childhood, adolescence, and finally womanhood. It takes weeks of preparation and teachings for this ceremony to take place. It starts in a teepee built by the men of the tribe. Here the girl will be blessed with pollen by tribe members and family members as a symbol of fertility. From this point on, she is considered sacred and must not be touched by anyone but her godmother for the remainder of the ceremony. At sunrise, she must run towards the rising sun every morning for a total of four times, one for each stage of life. The second day is started by dancing before sunrise facing the sun for six hours and praying to the mountain spirits for a long and successful life. After two long days, she is now halfway to becoming a woman. As darkness comes on the third day, the girl, joined by others within the tribe, dance for an entire night, staying awake in her teepee until the morning of the fourth day. As the girl then continues to dance, the other members within the tribe awake and the medicine men of the tribe greet the sun before her final test. A golden white clay of sacred corn flour and clay is poured over the girls by the mountain spirits. Finally, they will run their fourth and final path towards the sun, towards womanhood. As they then run, they wipe this clay from their faces, symbolizing their shedding of childhood into womanhood. As a final step to her transition, she is now given a new adult name, and she is a proud woman of her tribe. 